Good morning and welcome to Educating the Modern, where today I'm going to tell you all that I know about cast iron cookware. There gotta be a better way than this. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, first things up. I haven't eaten breakfast yet, so while this episode's gone, I'm gonna make me some breakfast. Um, I like cast iron. You guys, if you watch the show, you know this. So I need to tell you all that I know about it. Um, first is the brand names. Um, what you're wanting to look for for good quality cast iron almost exclusively comes from vintage cast iron. This right here is a Griswold and Griswold is, I don't care what ownership they pass through, the company changed hands quite a few times I guess, uh, but they still, every single Griswold is probably the most sought after name brand. Some of them are worth more, you know, you get the letters that are slanted, some are block letters, I don't know, whatever. But Griswold, you buy one of these, they're, it's good, alright? Same thing with Wagnerware, but that's like number two in line. Griswold at the top, Wagnerware right under that. And if you have different opinions, that's fine. You know, that's, it's just what I find, and I like the Griswold best. So, um, and most people, most other people do as well. Um, the other, the third one there is going to be your vintage lodge cast iron. I got one right here. This actually came from Waffle House, from an old Waffle House. So this was probably uh, a brand new whenever that Waffle House opened back in the 60s or something. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, but this is a vintage lodge. And if you guys are thinking about modern lodge and how roughly textured they are, the Vintage Lodge, um, I know for a fact that they made smooth stuff as well, but I think that they made either or. A lot of companies did. They made it rough or smooth. But that is besides the point. What um, you want to look for isn't a name brand. All right. Uh, if, if you're out there trying to find a good piece of cast iron, there's really only one thing that needs to happen and that is to look at the actual quality of the pan. A lot of these manufacturers, uh, Lodge, Wagnerware, and uh, Griswold, they made generic versions of the exact same pans. So, well, they'll be just as good. If name brand and collection is not what you're uh, looking for, you're just simply looking for a good quality skillet, just go for the build of the skillet. Now, what you want to look for is the inside should be smooth as a baby's butt. It should feel literally like glass, smooth glass. Um, there should be no bumps, no pits, and everything. You know, it should be really nice and smooth. Other than that, you want to check to see if it sits flat on a flat surface, right? No wobble. Lots of times they get overheated and they warp a little bit. And um, then finally you look for cracks. Other than that, it's just simply purely what you like. Um, the weight of it makes a difference and stuff. Now, what happened with the modern cast iron that you see? I don't care if it's the stuff that's made in China, uh, the stuff that's made in France, or the stuff that's made right here in the United States. Um, with the exception of only one that I know of, which is the Finex um, brand that's made, I believe, in Portland, Oregon. That is the only exception that I know of that is offering smooth pants. Um, all the rest of them are highly textured. And so you go, well, why is that? You're telling me right now that I want to look for the smooth texture. Well, the reason why we only have one major um, manufacturer of cast iron in this country is because back in the, uh, you know, started in the 50s, I believe, started in the 60s, 70s, just kept building and building. And what happened was a lot of uh, customers 
became familiar with cooking in aluminum and then they became familiar with cooking with Teflon coated. And so everybody, and you look back in those days, you know, who was doing the cooking? Like in my house right now, I do almost all the cooking. I like it, that's my thing. Um, but back in the 60s, who did the cooking? The, the women, that's just the fact of it, right? Um, largely anyways. So uh, they used the uh, ca they, they, they stopped using the cast iron, they started using the Teflon coated stuff, and what this did was this means the sales of the cast iron dropped. Um, once the sales of the cast iron dropped, then we get an entire generation of people that were raised on the cookings of uh, silicone or Teflon coated skillets. You see that? All right? They're, and so they, they forget how to treat cast iron, literally. You get these people that are growing up and they've never even seen cast iron. And so, of course, they don't know how to use it. And they hear all this stuff about seasoning and, oh, I've got to really take care of it. And they get one and it rusts because they leave it sitting in the sink and stuff like that. So it really, really drops out of uh, the, the mainstream. So what it is, is it becomes a lost art form. And, um, oh, a toast. It becomes a lost art form, and because of that, ooh, the sales continue to drop further and further. And what we see is we completely lose our love of cast iron as a country. Now, Lodge is still around. My theory is they were the smallest of the major manufacturers and so whenever all of the stuff happened and we and the main, major manufacturers really started losing their sales and stuff um, because Lodge was largely local business anyways they were able to stay uh, around a little bit longer um, and they figured out how to make it back to the main street and that was by creating skillets that people didn't have to season because they understood that people had kind of forgotten how to do that. They understood that people were used to this ease of use of the silicone coated stuff or the Teflon coated uh, skillets and things like that. And they wanted that. They wanted that ease of use. And so what they had to do was they had to figure out a way that they could pre-season it from the factory. Now, whenever they're extremely smooth, like these old vintage skillets, you can't just simply spray oil on it and throw it in an oven. It won't stick. So, what you've heard about Lodge, if, you, if you're if you really into this and you call Lodge and go, why is it so bumpy? And Lodge goes, well, we find that uh, the extra surface area is... Um, it directly contributes to the seasoning sticking to the pan better. They're not lying. That's exactly why they did it. However, um, it creates a surface that not only does the seasoning stick to, so does every goddamn thing that you cook. All right? So, while they were busy making something that seasoning would stick to so that it would p appeal to people that did not want to season their skillets, what they did was they created an absolutely inferior skillet, all right? Now this is okay because round about this time we're starting to learn all of the adverse effects of cooking in Teflon coated skillets and in cooking in nothing but aluminum skillets. They have uh, detrimental health concerns, all right? Now, most of us aren't going to deal with that and stuff. I'm pretty liberal with that idea, but it, uh, lots of people are really, they go, whoa, what, it's cancerous? Cancer-causing agents and stuff like that? Uh, and the, they get completely scared away. So they go back to the cast iron because they know that it is good for you. It actually puts iron into your body and everything. It leaches into the food that we eat, which is a very good thing. And, but because they've been so displaced from cast iron, they no longer know what is good quality cast iron. All they know is, Lodge comes pre-seasoned. That's fantastic. I'll buy it. And so they do. 
And this all happened with perfect timing because the other big names that were, well, the only one really that was left was Wagnerware, and they closed their doors because they wouldn't do something like what Lodge did, all right? And so this means the only manufacturer left in a time when people, the internet comes out and people are starting to learn about all of the bad, uh, uh, the adverse effects of Teflon skillets, and they're wanting cast iron, the only thing available to them is Lodge. And Lodge, the only thing that they're making is the pre-seasoned crap that you see in the stores. All right? Now, I like my Lodge, but I only like either my vintage, smooth, my enameled cast iron, right? or my polished. Now, I will still say without any hesitation that this right here is my favorite skillet. I've got about 15 different pieces of cast iron, and this is by far the best. I polish this. If you want to see a video to it, click this link. Um, but this is super smooth. It holds a seasoning just fine. And besides that, seasoning is overrated, which I'll do a video of. Um, but I still like my Lodge. I'm actually a Lodge dealer, and I sell it. But I will not sell... I will not sell the product unless I have polished it. So, there's the deal with cast iron. Anything, to recap real quickly, anything that you want to buy, name brands or whatever, no name brands, is fine. All you gotta look for, does it, is it warped, right? Will it sit on a flat surface? Um, is it cracked? Are there any hairline cracks that are in there? Any welds where people have tried to repair it? Um, and first and foremost, is it smooth? Look at that, you can see that, it's smooth. There are no dimples, bumps, pits, nothing. That is what is important. So, I think that's all I know about cast iron. I'm gonna eat my breakfast. <laughs>